Hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for a great Money Monday. We have another great speaker. And of course, our goal always on these Money Mondays on Wednesday um, is to provide you actionable information on your financial independence journey. And that looks different for everyone. So of course, some people are working, they're nine to five and they're saving diligently. Some people are into real estate, but then we have a number of business owners as well. And so some of those are aspiring business owners. Um, and then some of course are business owners that are getting their business off the ground. Maybe they're growing their business. And if that is you, we wanna speak to you today. And so today we have a great speaker to really talk about how to scale that business. And so regardless of where you are, if you're just getting started, if you're thinking about it, you have a great concept, you want to know how to get the money to continue to grow and fund that great idea that you have, that great venture that you have. And so Claire Soares is the creator of the self-funded CEO coaching program and the master of mind behind the multi-million dollar flagship startup travel company Up in the Air Life. She believes in doing what you love, being who you are, and living life out loud. As a former sales executive at a Fortune 500 company, Claire was a road warrior, traveling over a thousand flights during her sales career. Throughout that time, she learned the ins and outs of business travel, and in 2013, channeled her love for luxury, champagne, and exotic destinations into her successful company, Up in the Air Life. Claire and Up in the Air Life have been featured in the Walmart Black Girl Magic Campaign, the Airbnb inaugural Black Travel Leaders List, US Today, the Huffington Post, Essence, Ebony, The Root, Rolling Out, The Griot, and other online publications. So we have a star for you today and really want to thank you, Claire, for being with us. And I will turn the mic over to you. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here to speak with all you guys today. Um, what I have planned today is to talk about different free tools to help you grow and scale your business. And, you know, it's really important, especially now as we're in the pandemic. Um, I own a travel company. And so we were one of the largest hit businesses that literally went to a screeching halt to zero you know, and it's been like that for over a year for a lot of people, depending on what type of travel that they do. And when those types of things happen in your business, it's essentially like a crisis. Um, you're trying to figure out how do you cut costs? How do you save money? But how do you still function and survive so that you can still be moving forward? And so that you still can help your clients and provide the best service when things resume again. So I can't see the chat. Um, so just let me know if there's any uh, questions, Rosalind. Um, but let's get, let's get into it. So everyone always says, like, how do you get to the money faster? And that's one of the things that I always talk to my clients about is simplification and automation over making something like super complex. So the first thing I always recommend to my clients is if you're in a service-based business or any business where you have to take calls with your clients, you need to probably sign up for Calendly or some type of service like Calendly, that you can have people automatically be able to book uh, meetings with you and things like that. And how Calendly works is that it synchronizes with your existing calendar, like your Gmail. And so once it's synced with your Gmail, then what happens is that when clients are able to book, you would add that link to your actual Instagram and your website with a simple call to action of work with me or book a call. Once you do that, Let's say, I always say from your Instagram, keep it simple. They click on that link. Calendly will show the available times. If you have multiple options, you also can allow them to pick the different option. And also within Calendly, they can actually pay, but you don't have to do that in the basic version. They can just book a consultation call and keep going. Now, once someone books a call with you, you've essentially captured a lead. And so in marketing terms, when you get a lead, now you have their email. So now you know that this is a warm lead meaning someone who's interested in your service. So now you actually need to follow up with them to have some type of nurture series. What that means essentially is that a lot of people, um, studies have shown that when people go to buy something, they don't just necessarily go to your website and just buy. 
Yes, that happens sometimes, but for a lot of the case, people are actually going to have to have multiple interactions with you. And that's why, like you'll notice, if you go to a business coach's email, what'll be what'll happen? I'm sorry, if you go to a business coach's website or Marie Forley or any of those websites, you'll notice all of a sudden you see all these Tony Robbins ads. You'll see his ads on a Fox News or CNN news article that you're reading. You'll see it on YouTube. It, he basically is following you around. Those are retargeting ads. The reason is because the first time I go to Tony Robbins' website, I probably am not going to buy anything. I just want to check it out. I'm interested. The second time I may want to go to YouTube. And so what happens is you need to have a way that you're emailing someone directly to their inbox or using ads so that you can be at constant frame of mind. And that's called nurturing. So the second tool is MailChimp. You need to have some type of email marketing that will automate your onboarding of your clients and or a nurturing sequence, which I highly recommend because you want to build confidence and trust. Email marketing is one of the most highly engaged, solid ways to grow your business simply by providing your clients value. So what MailChimp does, it, it is a, it's a platform that is for free up to your first 2,000 contacts. And what that will do is it would allow you to, once you got their email, because they booked a call with you, uh, then you can then email them in MailChimp newsletters, value posts. So for instance, if I, you know, if I was in the business of a tax accountant, right? And that's my business. So once someone books a call with me, Think about what are the top six things your clients ask you about, and based on those top six things, what are the different emails and information that would be valuable that your client would need, and what would lead them to be able to work with you from that information? That's what you would want to put in those emails. So MailChimp will get you started in email marketing, and two things I'll just recap that you should have in your email marketing sequence once you get someone's email is that you should have a welcome sequence and a nurturing sequence. And they could kind of be one and the same, but a welcome sequence essentially is introducing yourself to that prospective client. So your first email is going to be like, hey, thanks so much for signing up for my newsletter. And then your future emails may say like, oh, okay, by the way, you can follow, follow me on Instagram. You can go ahead and check my YouTube videos every Thursday. You may have another video next week that says, hey, by the way, um, here's some of the different services that I provide. And then the fourth email may say, hey, I'd love to meet with you. Would you like to book a call with me? So you're basically building up to tell your story, to get them to engage with you, to get them to understand what you do so that you can do one thing. And for most people, it's book a call, <laughs> book a call, get on the phone with them so that you can just understand who they are, decide if they are the right client avatar and move forward. Now, how um, often should they be sending out these kind of nurture emails and so mm -hmm. forth through MailChimp? So I would recommend for a welcome sequence, two times a week max. So when you someone first signs up, I think two times a week is reasonable. So their first email they get, and then maybe three days later, you're asking them uh, to follow you on three days later, you're telling your story. Um, you can Google like sample welcome email sequence and get lots of ideas. Um, the other way too is simply sign up for your biggest fans that you have online for your, you know, some of the Tony Robbins, Marie Forleo, sign up for those people's websites or anyone, any coach's website. And when you do, you'll get their welcome sequence and you can see what they're doing and decide how you can take that as inspiration and make it your own. So uh, next thing we'll talk about is Canva. So now that you've got a way to automate your calls. You've got a way to nurture your leads through email marketing. Now you need to have a way to create nice graphics because you may want to start soliciting clients on Instagram, um, or you may want to have graphics in your emails. And so Canva, Canva is an amazing platform and their free, um, their free option does have tons of templates. What I recommend is you can do like your Facebook headers, your YouTube headers, you also can do Instagram graphics and carousels. When you go into Canva, you can simply search by Instagram template, Instagram post, IG template, stories template. When you use the templates, one of the cheats I always tell people, if you're not a graphic artist like myself, don't move the placement of anything. Change the word, change the colors, 
but don't start moving things because once you start moving things now you've changed the visual look of it and so when things are should be like at nine o'clock or three o'clock or line should be up here or down there when you start moving it it will not look at nice and then you'll be like oh what happened so the simple thing that i always tell my clients pick one that you like as far as the layout and simply change the words and colors but don't move things around so much because then it starts to be off base now, once you get to a point in your business when you want to spend money, I highly advise Canva Pro because then you can do more advanced things. Like I can take a picture of myself and then take out the background. And then I can put that on top of another picture. Um, or you can have a graphic artist is what we do, log in and create graphics for us when we need to. But regular Canva, we've been doing using regular Canva for the last five or six years. We really didn't spend any money on Canva Pro until recently. Um, number four, oh, and this is my favorite. I gush about it. It's Airtable. We still use the free Airtable version. Airtable is essentially like Excel on steroids. Uh, with Airtable, we use it for HR management. So we have like a whole database in Airtable where we keep all of the people on our team with their headshots, their phone numbers and contact information. We also use Airtable for client testimonials. So after uh, clients use our service, we follow up with them and Airtable collects um, the testimonials and headshots. And so one of the things that I like about Airtable is think about Excel, right? So it's basically a spreadsheet, but you're able to choose every column and then say what type of field it is. So I can say the first field is um, gonna contain text. My next field is going to have a drop down box. And then you can say the drop down box is going to be like t shirt size, small, medium, large. And so as you decide what all these different columns are, and one can be an attachment, you then can click one button and it takes those fields and drops them into a form. So any type of data research or collection you're doing, you can basically put that into a spreadsheet and Airtable, click one link, it turns it into a form. So imagine for clients, you want to ask them different questions. You want to get a net promoter score where they rate you. You want to give them a one to five star rating for their service. And they fill that out. And once you decide what you want to capture, you click a button, it turns it to a form. From that form, click another button, it gives you a link. And then you can give that to your clients. Now, some of the cool things you can do on the back end is that with that one table, you're essentially creating different views in Airtable. So now I can do things like click a button to say, create a gallery for all the people that uploaded their headshot with their testimonial. So now on your back end, you'll be able to see all the clients that gave you a testimonial. You can see a nice headshot. And so we use that as well when we are planning for like, um, internal conferences and things like that, where we have speakers on my team and we're putting together an event, we'll actually upload headshots and then we have a nice gallery. So highly recommend Airtable.com. Um, also for Airtable, there's amazing templates and all this is for free. Um, obviously they have a paid version that does even more functionality, but the free version provides you so much value. I highly recommend it. All right, so next couple things I want to talk about is the next one would be SCORE. And I'm sure Rosalind knows about SCORE already. Um, SCORE is awesome. Like SCORE is actually a program run by the SBA. So if you can go to SCORE.org. Um, the one thing that I guess surprised me recently is I didn't realize like you can get free coaching on SCORE with a mentor. They call it a mentor. And so if you go to score.org, you can sign up and request to have a mentor. And I loved it because um, after the pandemic, when I just felt like I was kind of flat, even though I'm in a coaching program, I actually sought out to talk to someone else that was more old school in business. And I got a free mentor and he was meeting with me once a month. And he took me to some basic fundamental things that sometimes I feel like as a online marketer, entrepreneur person, you know, I think everyone has their things that they're really good at and their things that they rocked out in their business. But I also think if you didn't come from like, I'm not, I'm not someone who's uh, creating these massive business plans when I create my businesses and some people do. And so when you skip those steps, there's definitely value in going back and talking to someone that's a little more old school and how to market and what to do to see what you may have 
miss. And so there were small diamonds that I got when I worked with him. And I did get a little inspiration off of those conversations that helped me with my new launch that I just completed. Now, so what's that, some of the kind of top, maybe one or two things that, you know, you may have skipped. And I think everyone does this. You got a good idea and you're like, great, put it on social media. Or maybe, <laughs> you know, you sell your first widget to a friend and your friend's like, you should sell these widgets to everyone. And you just kind of get started. Mm -hmm. What are some things, especially for those people that are in the thought phase and they're like, I bet I could do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe a step or two that they should put some time into thinking about. So kind of two things. So for me, some of the steps that I had to go back and think about was he started to ask me because we're in a pandemic pandemic, and we weren't really selling any travel. We went on a hiatus. You know, he asked me about why did people first buy from you? Like what was some of the different differentiators? What, are, what were some of the things that you did when you first started to market and to communicate to your clients? And then how do you go back to figuring out those things and making them better? If you're just getting started, what I always recommend is first and foremost, get a little clear first on what you want your life to look like. Like, what do you want? How many hours a week do you ideally want to work? What kind of projects do you want to work on? What are you most passionate about? What are your goals relationship? What are your goals financially? And be clear on that first before you start a business. Because the one thing, when I talk to some people, when they say, oh, like, I want to create this business and it's a business that's a face-to-face -face business. And I'm like, well, how many hours do you want to work a week? Oh, well, I really only want to work 20. And I'm like, well, that business, like if you want to open up a Dunkin' Donuts, you might probably have to be in the store for 40 hours a week. So that's not a job where if you tell me you want to travel the world, that's not the right business for you probably starting out because you may have to actually be in the actual store. You can't just like zip off and go move to Columbia with a physical store. And so those were some of the things that I feel like you need to get clear on before you get started. And then once you're clear on that, understand what your market is, understand what's available. And then once you understand what's available, think about what people are not doing. So what are they not doing and where are the holes that you can fulfill. And so when you think about um, the holes you can fulfill, there's two pieces of paper. Yeah, when you think about uh, the holes that you can feel, I always tell people to be better than other people, set your own bar. It's not necessarily that you're comparing yourself to them, although you are going to be, you should have your own barometer. Like my barometer of my business is based on me. It's not necessarily based on other people because I know what where I wanna be. And so you have to think about, uh, think about how you're gonna serve your client and what value you're gonna bring to the table. Um, the other thing you need to think about is how, it, how are you going to execute the service? So think about that customer journey. I mean, that's the core thing. One, how are you going to capture the lead? Once you get the lead, how are you going to close the client? And then once you close them, I know we all get excited. How are you going to deliver the service efficiently? How do you repeat that process? And then how do you repeat that process to ask them to close things out with the client? So I always find that delivery is often where things can fall apart. Delivery and automation of being able to, you know, if you, I was talking to my team this week, you know, we just expanded our travel business from doing group trips to now we do individuals, right? So I went from not really talking to anyone about private trip planning to talking to 10 people this week and another eight people next week. And so our volume just 10X. And if I'm on the phone with people, to just talk to them initially, it's not going to be scalable. Like we couldn't grow a hundred X. I mean, that's ambitious, but I have ambitious goals, but we can't grow super fast if I got to hop on the phone. And if I do have to hop on the phone, then you have to think about, okay, well, what's the max revenue opportunity of this? So automation and what's, what's your ability to deliver? I mean, I know like a lot of people are full time, working full time, and if you are in your business part-time, be realistic about how many hours you actually have to dedicate to this. And then how are you going to get everything that's needed to deliver? So any other questions about that, Rosalind? No, I think that's big. And I think it's just those questions that 
you know, we start with an idea, we start with a product, whatever it is, and you start with idea to sale. <laughs> but not all the touches it takes to make a sale. And sometimes it's low hanging fruit, which is your first few sales. And you don't think about all the touches of how many people you'll have to kind of prospect in order to get to the sale. And I like the fact you talked about even, you know, some of the tools that make it easier, like the Calendly. Calendly um, I had a situation and it was just earlier this week, I was trying to make a hair appointment and it was like, text me. And I'm like, text you like, and it's like, I'm free Wednesday. And I was like, I got something Wednesday. Like, I don't want to go back and forth. And she literally lost a sale because I want to go back and forth. Like, just let me look at your calendar and I'll tell you what works. But I think it's those small steps to make, make it easy for people to do business with you. Um, and that's kind of the step that sometimes people miss and you miss a sale that way. So mm -hmm. like you said, if you have to be on the phone with 10 people, wow. is there enough information that's like there for them to self-serve to at least get the process started. So it's they have the money people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that, and you know, this is a good point because I train my clients on sales calls. And one of the things I always say is understand what they want ask the questions you need to filter through to determine if they're the right fit for this service. And then once you have those answers, recap what you heard, repeat like, okay, so you're saying this. Okay, great, great, great. Okay. Are you right? So are you going to be ready to move forward? Like tell them what the next steps are. So normally what I do is after this call, I would then uh, send you, I'm going to so what I do at the end of my call, at the end of the call, what's going to happen? My team's going to follow up with you. When are they going to follow up? They're going to follow up with you within 24 hours. They're going to send you a link to our trip planning for sure. They're also going to send you a link to purchase. And if you have any other questions, all you have to do is reply to that email with the dates and times you're available and we'll quickly call you or hop on a call with you. So always being very open and transparent about what the next step is, what the next step is, what's going to happen. And when you do that, um, you know, I have over a decade experience in sales. When you communicate to clients and I forget what the strategy is called, but you tell them what's going to happen before it happens. They feel so comfortable with you. They, and it builds trust. It builds trust and rapport. I saw there was a question in the chat. All right. What was I going to say? Um, what was I else going to say? Okay, so a couple more tools that I have. Uh, big Cartel. Gosh, I feel like Big Cartel is like a big secret. So uh, Big Cartel, if you don't know, allows you to list three items and those three items for free on their website. And so if you need to like sell consulting and you're just getting started and you keep it simple, you got a one page website or even not even a website, you are pushing people to your Calendly from your Instagram. From Calendly, they book a call. From the call, your follow-up email, that could be automated too. That email gives them a link to pay on Big Cartel. Super simple, looks legit. At the end of the day, you need to have a nice online presence so people will be able to book with you. I feel like when people don't allow me to book online, I'm kind of looking at them with a weird face because I expect everyone to be able to book online. And so if they're not book, allowing me to book online, I'm definitely like questioning. Um, the next two I'll talk about is Slack. Uh, Slack is one of my favorite tools. Slack is essentially a communication tool. And so, you know, I outsource abroad a lot. And so my team is in Australia, Jamaica, um, Argentina, and the Philippines. And when we have conversations, it used to be one chat. Well, that got old very quickly. And so what happens is that with Slack, it allows you to have different chats based on a category. So we've got a channel for customer service. We've got a channel for finance. We've got a channel for website updates. We've got a channel for the internal book club, whatever we're doing for the month together. And so what happens is that we can have conversations in those channels. So when you have a question about what we talked about for customer service or the website, you just go back to that channel. It's way easier. Slack is free. We're still on the free version. It is amazing. Now, Slack is going to be internal um, in terms of a tool, correct? No, you actually can use Slack with clients. So okay. some people do use Slack with clients. 
I have used Facebook in the past with clients, but I have teetered with thinking about building Slack for my coaching clients um, over, and this is over WhatsApp. So right now, if I coach people, I do have a WhatsApp for them, but I am considering moving to Slack because if I move to Slack, they can have their own private Slack channel and ask me questions privately. But the cool thing is my team members who work for me can also look at those messages and give them answers. Because I'm not the only one that has the answers to things in my program. My team members also know where a file is or whatever like that. So it's definitely also an area that you could, if you do like consulting, you could also leverage that. And it depends on your industry. Now, I think that's huge because you listed so many of the free tools that are out there. How do you know or gauge when it's time to pay? So, um, you know, starting on the free version and I was talking to someone earlier today and I was like, oh, no, I'm still on the free version. And they're like, that's a great investment. And definitely, you know, all of these are like, oh, it's only $10 a month or $20 a month. And then when you add up, you're like, oh, I'm paying a few hundred dollars a month for all these different tools. How do you kind of start to quantify, okay, this is the turning point. Mm -hmm. where I start paying for more of these tools out there? Uh, for me, it's definitely when I need functionality that they're not delivering. So specifically with Calendly, you're going to hit a wall when you need to have multiple pages or multiple options. Like, so we do pay for our scheduling service. We use Schedule Once. And with Schedule Once, we have multiple booking pages. So I have a booking page for my coaching business, a booking page for my travel business. And we used to have four licenses. So customer service had a page. And the reason we had all those pages is it synced with different calendars. And so when you wanted to meet with customer service, it sunk with their email. And then my other person that was an executive also had her own. And so it really depends on functionality. Like for Airtable, I was asking my friend, like, why are you paying? And there are things like they don't save all your data forever. And so on the version I'm on, you will hit a limit when you save so much data that you can't save any more data or with uh, Slack where they're not going to save your data in perpetuity. But at the moment right now, like it's not a deal breaker. So we're not paying for those tools. We do pay for a lot of other tools. We pay for the tools that we pay for are tools to like our backend system. So our backend systems to process our transactions. We are paying for tools to do that. We are paying for website hosting. Uh, we pay for Gmail. We also pay for um, text messaging. We pay for video customer service, which is a one that excites me, bomb bomb. I love bomb bomb. Oh my gosh. Um, bomb bomb lets us send a video back to a customer. And so we just started using it. And so when customers send us emails, we're able to say, hey, so-and-so, we have a board with their name on it and we're able to give them a video response. And the rate of people opening up your email and being excited and feeling special is like exponentially better. I think that's huge. Now, what are you using for the text messages? I know that's kind of one of the more popular things as people, I feel like every single hour I go through and I'm like, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> <laughs> getting rid of and cleaning out the email. And so I know so many organizations are trying to get around that by mm -hmm. sending those texts. Is there a free version of something to use to get started? I think sometimes it's just kind of, you know, what can we do to see if it works? Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> how many text messages do you send out to see if I send a hundred and only two people <laughs> respond <laughs> or act on it? Is there something that you can use on the free side before you actually start to pay? That's a good question. I don't know of a free app for text messaging. We are using text right now through uh, Infusionsoft, which also powers our backend systems. And they allow us to text clients right from their mobile app. And so that's been super huge because... Um, we also use WhatsApp business, but WhatsApp is not like, um, my issue with WhatsApp right now is like for a business account, it doesn't allow multiple people to sign in. So although we do have WhatsApp, um, it's just not really helpful because only one person can log in. So I don't know a free text messaging. We're text messaging right now in Keep. We are going to implement uh, text messaging through like for email, mar for text mar marketing. And we haven't fully implemented. We've been using text messaging for opt-in forms. We've been testing that. 
and we text clients. Um, and I like how in our new system, it synchronizes like all the communications that you have with the client in one place. So I can actually see everything. It's very neat and clean. And it also has the email marketing built into one tool. So it's super powerful. We're still learning it. Um, but I think like starting out, I don't know. I don't know any free ones. I can't think of any free ones. Now, one thing you talked about too, is as we kind of look through all these and I, I mean, I use Canva and I feel like I'm, you know, thumbing through it sometimes and, you know, I'm definitely using a number of these. And I think one of the bigger things is once you get started and you're like, okay, great. I started, got my free account. And you may want someone to like hold your hand or uh, informational. Um, how are you learning to be most efficient? And then of course, being able to use all the free tools that exist in the free version. Cause you may, I mean, especially like if you're on Canva, you're just like, oh, I'm just making this one, this one flyer. And all I know how to do is make one flyer, but in terms of those other things. So of course, if people are doing the Instagram and all those kind of things, how to then make sure people are getting the most out of whatever it is that they're signing up for. Okay, so easy answer. When I first got started, I wasn't doing this. I went into Canva and I would play around with it, but if I needed a graphic, I would pay someone on Fiverr $5 to do the graphic. She had a two-day turnaround. All I had to do was go on the internet, find a graphic I liked, tell her the change, the tweaks on how I wanted it and the data, and she would do whole graphics, whole one-pagers. That's how I did it. So I would go on Fiverr and pay someone to do the graphic because you don't really have time to learn it. Now, if you do want to learn it, and you also have to remember, like, I am definitely a proponent that you need to choose what you're going to learn and what you're going to outsource. Though I am not on team do everything yourself because I don't really, I don't believe that you can try to do everything yourself, but at a certain point, you're going to kind of dilute your business, I feel like, at a certain point because it's very exhausting to do every single thing yourself. Um, I would definitely look at outsourcing overseas. I mean, you can get a VA um, anywhere. It depends what you want, four to $10 to do a lot of different stuff for you, post things, create graphics. Um, when I do need to learn something, my favorite place to learn is YouTube University. And um, I have a team now. So when I first started, I didn't always have a team, but I quickly hired a VA not long into it, which I highly advise to hire someone 10 hours, 20 hours a week to start helping you do the admin stuff. Um, and so my team goes to YouTube for a lot of stuff. Um, there's also training that the product gives you. So Canva has their own training. And then if you go on YouTube, you can find like advanced Canva training. And there's plenty of people that love to get paid ads that will show you how to do a lot of things on YouTube as well. I think that's cool. I mean, it's one of those things. Now you mentioned having a team mm -hmm. and so many people start off as, you know, entrepreneurs and solopreneurs. How did you know it was time to hire your first person? So you got your virtual assistant. Was that your first kind of employee or informal employee that you added to the team? And then you branched out from there. I think sometimes people are like, I can't afford, I can't afford, but you mentioned you know, there's only so much you as one person can do. When do you make that switch to now it's time to get an actual additional employee? So my advice, if you are working now, is once you get started and you get to the point where you get yourself caught up in admin work that a high school person can do, you need to hire. And I would start with always a VA always have the VA do these follow-up emails that are templated, anything that is simple, basic tasks, follow-up emails, posting on the Facebook, things like that. And as the CEO of your business, you focus on things that only you can do. So you'll need to, the other thing too, to immediately figure out what the person's going to do is you need to actually do a time study. So one of my coaches, Alex Sharfin, the first thing we do in this coaching program, we have to do a time study for the first week. And what you do is every 15 minutes, you keep track of what you're doing. If you do that, you'll get a lot of interesting understanding on how you actually spend your time. And so in this time study, the last time I did it, I realized I was spending 15 hours of my work week on project management. So I immediately hired a project manager to give myself 15 more hours. 
So starting out, it's definitely going to be a VA. That VA can answer emails. The VA can, you know, respond to Facebook inquiry. You're going to need a lot of help for customer service support and rudimentary, rudimentary uh, things starting out. And then as you grow, you have to decide when you're going to be strategic to hire, like I say, the big guns, the big guns. And I almost feel like marketing is like a really huge area that you need to consider, um, especially depending on your business, you're going to need to hire someone for online marketing. Um, and that's where we spent a lot of money on. We spent money on getting assets, uh, client photos, client videos, and getting like a marketing expert to assist us with ads in Facebook, Instagram, and to develop um, email marketing strategies. Now these templates, especially like the mail templates and so forth, and I get a whole bunch. Um, I love, you know, especially if you watch one webinar or whatever, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, um, I, I know it's one, I was getting one every single morning and I'm like unsubscribe, like that's definitely overkill. And the emails were so long. Um, in terms of how many of those can you read every single day and how much of that. So when you think about those kind of like drip emails as you're nurturing that relationship and so forth, what's a good template to go by? I definitely, I mean, me personally, I'm not reading, you know, if I have to scroll, 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 <laughs> I'm probably not going to finish reading it. And I'm definitely not going to do it, you know, week mm -hmm. after week or day after day. How do you determine the right mix of, you know, not two bullets, but not two pages worth of information as well? Think about your client. Everything you do in your business, you need to think about what is the customer journey? Is my customer a millennial who's not going to read, who's not going to scroll? Or are my customers busy that they're not going to read, not going to scroll, right? And so in that case, I would say, Video. I love video. I tell more people they need to use video. Pretty much everything that we're doing, we're moving to video. Why? Nobody wants to read your long email. They don't want to read it. <laughs> like it's great when it's terms and conditions, but even that, like I was telling my team, like simplify it to 90 seconds, 90 seconds. People see a video. They're going to listen to your video. They're going to be captivated in the first 30 seconds, but your email, your long email with a whole bunch of paragraphs, I get it. It's challenging. Like our email marketing, the way it is, you're telling the whole story. It's, it's long and it's scrolling, but it works, but it ain't working for everybody. So I think you need to think about your client, maybe mix in video, mix in photos. And really when you start to send out your emails, you can test it to see what your open rates are. Like how many people are opening it, opening it. Did you close any business from what email? And so one of the hugest things also that I had to be reminded of is understanding your KPIs, understanding your KPIs in your business. How many new leads are you getting? How are you getting those leads? Where are they seeing you? At what point are people buying from you? Really understanding this because there are clues to your success. You just have to find the clues. Now, what's the KPI to define for us? Ah. <laughs> a KPI is a key you want to know, so a KPI is a key performance indicator. So for, in, for instance, we track annual KPIs on, I, I tell them for the year what we're tracking. And for us, it's always going to be a financial number is our ultimate goal. And then secondary is a number goal. So our goal would be how many million we want to, is the goal for the year. And then the second thing is how many bookings are we going to get? Something simple that everyone can understand. How many bookings? how many million we're going to do on the coaching, and then how many people we're going to coach, right? You also look at how many new leads or new calls did I have? We track by week. How many calls did I get this week? How many calls did I get the next week? We have a spreadsheet. We're tracking all that. How many calls did I get? How many new deals did we close? How much cash did we collect this week? Um, what else are we... We also track emails we send out. We track the open rates of the email, which emails had unsubscribes. And so we, what happens is that quickly after a couple months, you start to see trends and clues. Like when we send out this email, mad people opened it. And you're like, wait, 
Like a normal open rate is 20% of your list will open. If you saw like a couple of your emails got 50%, what did you talk about in those emails? Whatever it is, it's something people care about. And maybe you should do more of that, right? And um, we also track, what else do we track? We also track followers on Instagram, lost followers on Instagram, people in our Facebook group, how many people, how many people not. Um, I think those are the key ones, cash, revenue, leads. <laughs> no, you did talk about like the open rate. And I think a lot of times people are chasing um, like the SEO. So anybody who has a website or anything, somebody's probably in your inbox or emailing you and they're like, hey, I do search engine optimization, pay me X, whatever. Um, I think that's one of the harder decisions because I think not everyone is used to, and especially if you have a sales background, you're used to like a, <laughs> a successful number of not being 80, 90%. And so, but if you're just getting started and you've never actually done sales before, and now all of a sudden you're selling whatever widget or what have you to figure out kind of what are those key numbers, or is it time to hire or work on some of that search engine optimization? I know you know, there's people who say they can do it and they may or may not actually have results or, you know, then there's classes you can take and all of those kind of things. Is that something that people should be investing in or how do they know when it's time to kind of pivot to figure out, can I get some help in terms of engaging people with the language that they're using? Ooh. Let me see. SEO, just when I see it and I hear it, my head's about to freaking explode. Um, I have not focused on SEO, um, but I know what SEO is. And so the way, what SEO is, it's search engine op optimization. What that means is when someone's going to look, I have a travel company. When they type in black travel groups, where do I show up? That's SEO is, and oftentimes what will happen is your SEO increases because A, maybe you're writing blogs on your page. So that means that the simple way to explain SEO is what are your clients typing in Google when they want to find you? And whatever they're typing in, make sure you include that phrase on your website as much as possible, right? So if it's Black travel groups, then we should have on our, on our website, we should have that phrase as a keyword. We also may want to write blogs. And at the end of the blog, you write a natural sentence, up in the air life is a black travel group. And then if you start to write that phrase, what happens is you'll rank higher in the SEO. We, I honestly haven't spent a lot of time with SEO. At one time, we did have a blog manager. Um, but right now what I do, um, what I have been doing is you can use Uber Select, which is a product by Pat Flynn, patflynn.com. And what I've done there is Enter your competitors and find out how they're getting traffic. And then what you can do to redirect traffic is start creating similar content to redirect people to your site. So what I've been doing is not necessarily always looking at my competitors. I look at like the big boys, like National Geographic, Abercrombie, and how are they getting their traffic and really understanding, understand what works, understand the clues. Where's Abercrombie getting traffic from? Oh, they're getting a lot of traffic from this article. What? What is that article about? Who wrote it? And maybe I can get in that article because we are all in the luxury space per se. Um, but another big secret too is to use HARO, H-A-R-O, helpareporter.com. HARO is a service that you are able to contribute and answer questions to reporters. So my USA Today feature was because I answered a reporter about how to get refunds on um, hotels. <laughs> And that's huge. I think that's something that people haven't heard of because oftentimes people will say, you know, people, and I always say, you know, be conscious about where you get your information from, but people are like, oh, I was featured in this magazine, this magazine, this magazine. And that's how, you know, people are trying to figure out how to get that exposure. And I think some people are saying, I got to do something to go viral. Um, <laughs> and maybe it's just, you know, you need that validation to say I'm an expert in my field. That's a great resource. But of course, if you do that and you get featured to be ready with some of those other tools. So do you have your Calendly set up so that you can actually 
have a conversation. <laughs> I mean, there's so many ways to build authority. I think the biggest one that I'll, that I recommend is if you want to build authority, read, start reading 30 minutes a day about what's happening in your industry and start talking about it, posting about it, or writing about it on a public platform. And when you do that, again, that's going to contribute to SEO because now all of a sudden you're popping up. You start becoming the person that people are starting to look at on what's happening. See, I think that's huge too, because I know a lot of people have, you know, social media, but then I think one question that people are wondering is, so if your company is ABC and your name is Jane Doe, should your social media be Jane Doe or should it be ABC company? Um, in terms of which one are you driving more traffic to and spending and investing that time in? Mm -hmm. So I think it depends. Um, it depends on how you want to sell. Like for instance, my travel company, it's up in the air life. Everything is up in the air life. It mentions me in the social media, um, Instagram. Uh, but other than that, it's up in the airlife.com. There, there's no reason to use my name. Now I have a personal brand, um, but my personal brand is for me. So my personal brand, I'm selling coaching services. I do some other things. And so it depends on what you're selling. Like my personal brand, I sell a coaching program called self-funded CEO. Now I own the URL, but I direct people to Claire B source and Claire B source is my homepage. And that's where I'm building out my lifestyle brand, where I'm going to start blogging about all the things I love travel champagne. And then by the way, I do coaching. So you've got to figure out how do you want to present your brand? Um, like for my travel company, I just didn't feel like it was about me. It's about this lifestyle up in the air life. It's about this luxury lifestyle. Um, and so, yeah, you'll just have to decide how you want to do that. <laughs> Now, if they're doing both, so if they have this ABC company and then, you know, Rosalind Brown page, mm -hmm. should they duplicate the post? I think sometimes that's a question in terms of, you know, when we talk about bandwidth. So if we post an apple and an apple, you know, is great for health and all that, should I post that on the ABC company and post that on the Rosalind Brown page? Or do you need to have more varied content between the different places? I would say you, I wouldn't duplicate the same post necessarily. No, I wouldn't. Absolutely not. What I would say is like for my, in my example, I own a travel business. We market to consumers directly as a company. The other reason why it's a company is because when I die, it will still exist. It's not just me. People may not even talk to me, right? two years from now, when I retire, they may not talk to me. They may talk to the new CEO, but I own the company. I'm the founder. So that's how you think about it. Our Instagram content is about the products we sell. We sell trips. We sell personalized travel. Our clients care about bougie things. Think about what people care about and post about that. We post about black on this, black on that, because that's one of our core values that we shifted last year um, to support the Black Lives Matter movement. And so we post about that all the time. On my personal page, it's about me. Like I would never post a picture of me on my business page, on my up in the air life page, unless I was doing something or being featured. On my personal page, I may post inspirational quotes about being an entrepreneur and things like that. I would never post that on my travel page. We're not selling inspiration on being an entrepreneur necessarily. Now, if we were doing an entrepreneur retreat that you travel to, that would make sense. And so, and this is something that I see a lot, like, you know, I coach people and I'm just like, when I see their pages, I'm like, if you're selling this, like, I shouldn't see like a bikini shot of you on your page. Like you're not set, like it has nothing, like it needs to make sense, you know? Like, that's why I feel like you need to have your personal brand and then you need to have your business page or you just need to, I don't know, you need to figure out how to make it work. But I do feel like there's overlap where people are selling a service and then their posts don't align. Like, you know, I saw someone post a picture of themselves in a bathtub and then they're selling like consulting stuff. And I feel like that's off brand. It just feels bizarre. That feels like that should be on a personal page, even though you weren't naked. But I just feel like that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let me get my dress. <laughs> 
that. I'm like, oh, wait, this person sells what again? Or maybe you have uh -huh. to scroll twice mm -hmm. um, just to really kind of understand what is it that they do or what they're mm -hmm. selling or what service that they provide. And I think that's kind of hard, especially if you're an owner and maybe you don't have a business page or maybe, you know, you're doing duplicates. So your business is your personal page as well. And when to kind of like split them and immediately then post. <laughs> and I think, you know people are like goodness how many posts do you need to make and so in terms of like social media posts too how many times are you posting during the week or is it multiple times during the day um I think that's a hard thing because you know some businesses I look and I'm like wait this person only has like 50 posts <laughs> that's low um, and then there are some people that I've unfollowed just because Lord have mercy, like I can't look on social media without seeing them, <laughs> they're live every day, or, you know, they got 10 posts all day long. And I'm thinking, okay, that's a bit much, you know, you're dominating the space. What is a good, happy medium? I mean, from an email perspective, you said a couple times a week, but from social media, I mean, I don't necessarily need to know that you're out getting a hamburger today. Like how often should these posts be posted? Okay, so that's that's a very layered answer question. Um, I'm not gonna tell you, you need to post one time a week or no time a week or whatever. What I will, or four times a week. What I will tell you is you need to be clear on what your goals are, right? So whatever your goals are, that's going to determine what you wanna do. So for instance, at Up In The Air Life, we have not been selling any trips for a year until three weeks ago, right? Three weeks ago, we started selling trips. I made the decision not to post on Facebook anymore for the last month. Why? Because I have a small team now and our focus is to get all of our clients rebooked to sell to our extensive 30,000 customers we already have their email to, to and sell to those people and people who've gone on our trips and do webinars and really just sell service, answer text messages, and really focus on selling over the next month and not worry about no social media. Now that may seem counterintuitive to what a lot of people are talking about, but one thing I've learned during my launch is that we've totally surpassed, we've almost hit our annual goal in three weeks just by spending 20 something hours giving, I don't even know if it's 20 hours, it's probably 15 hours of webinars that I personally gave. And simply by staying on these live webinars, getting customers on and taking the time to present to clients what we were selling and going through what who we are and all that we've accomplished, we've exponentially sold more than what we sold all of last year. That's huge. I mean, we're, we're talking almost at a million dollar launch in silence. And so what I learned from that is um, when you're starting out and you don't have a list, yeah, you need to be posting. You, you should have a launch plan. I would say you should post three times a day, um, at least two, if you're trying to gain traction, because the more you post with the Instagram algorithm, you are going to attract and your uh, reach is going to um, go higher. Reach means if you post more on Instagram, they're going to show your post to more people. When you add hashtags to your post, more people are going to see it. So if you're new and you only have, you know, less than a thousand followers, you're trying to grow. Yeah, you need to post often, but make sure it's valuable content your clients want to see. That will facilitate growth. We already have over 70,000 followers, 30,000 on our email, you know, blah, 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 whatever, right? So I made the decision, we all need to try to get new clients. It's just sell. Like one of my mentors told me, Claire, sell to who you have. And I took that advice and it has been a valuable lesson for me. So I think you need to look at your goals and make sure your goals are pointing to the actions you're taking because you can get caught in this whole rabbit hole of social media. Let me tell you, I have not posted on my personal page or my business page for like a month strategically because what I am doing, we've been spending 12 hours a day doing webinars, doing um, booking clients, rebooking clients, strategically planning out our email marketing for our follow-up strategy, doing videos, and those are the things that are where the money resides.
I think that's huge. And I think that's it's counterintuitive to kind of what people are being told. Mm -hmm. But I think it it reminds me a lot of whether it be cable companies or cell phone companies, they continuously ignore their current clients and they're always prospecting to a new client. And then what do you do? You continuously leave. So you keep jumping and jumping. So opposed to working for retention. And so those clients, you know, you talked about your email list are cheaper because you've already acquired them. So you don't have to do paid ads. You don't have to, you know, send out something or a free gift or whatever it might be. You already have access to them. Um, so I think it's a thought process that most people just simply aren't thinking about, mm -hmm. um, but it makes so much sense. And I know we're right up against the time. I know one question or one thing I want to make sure that you highlight mm -hmm. is your coaching business. So tell mm -hmm. us about what it is, mm -hmm. who it's made for, of course, how they can reach you, uh -huh. and then what should they expect from the coaching side? Awesome. 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 So with my coaching program, it's essentially a program for people who already have businesses that need to really work on sales, marketing, and customer service. So in my program, I basically walk with you to make sure that your social presence is good to go. Your website's good to go. We make sure you have a irresistible offer. And so one of the biggest things in my program is that there's templates for everything. And so there's a workbook that you can kind of journal and answer questions and get to the answers. And then there's workbook, there's worksheets that you can craft out your offer. You can do your budgeting. There's pricing uh, calculators there that will actually tell you what your markup needs to be to get a certain amount of profit. And so we teach you about net profit, profit, the financial things, spreadsheets to map up your budgets. For people that have travel business, we travel businesses, we have very detailed sheets to help you plan trips, uh, to also uh, help you execute the operations. And then we go through like customer service, customer service templates, um, my special method on how to run sales calls, how to close calls. And we have a deep dive into marketing where I share all the marketing hacks from Instagram to Facebook with spreadsheets to create your content. So it is a 12 week program. And so if you're interested in my program, you can go check me out on Instagram and you can click a link there to book a call and get started. I think that's huge. Now, who should be um, reaching out to you? People who are just getting started, existing businesses, dreams of businesses. <laughs> who, who's the ideal client for you? I would say my ideal client is someone who already has a business idea and has already gotten started. So you already know what you're selling. You just may need help getting through. And then also my business would be great for someone who has a business already, who's probably around in the six figure range up to that six figure range. And you're looking to really get a solid customer journey set up from the very beginning of capturing your leads all the way through implementation and execution. Those would be my ideal clients. I've worked with people in the travel industry, obviously. I have a client who has service companies like tax services. Uh, I have a videographer service. I have someone who has a TV show that I work with. So I work with all different types of people. But the one thing they have in common is they all need to launch businesses, price businesses, and create offers and close sales. <laughs> I love it. This was such great information and I'll go through them and name them. I've been listing them on the Facebook side too. So if you missed any parts of it, so the Calendly, mm -hmm. I always say that horribly wrong, but it is black owned. Um, so yeah. of course, if you're in the mood and you're setting yourself up to support more black businesses, download that and make yourself available. There is nothing more frustrating to me as a consumer if I had to keep saying, okay, well, what about Thursday at two? Oh, that doesn't work. Okay, what about Friday at one? Like, no, just let me see. Um, MailChimp, so you can continuously stay engaged. Canva, so you can have good graphics. Airtable, I didn't know about this when I'm like, we gotta do this. This is, you know, an upgrade uh, from like the Google Forms that I'm using and so forth. Score through the SBA, so you can get some free coaching and resources and so forth. Um, Big Cartel, I forgot what that one does. Oh, that's the, um, so you can actually sell your services. Mm -hmm. 
and then Slack so you can communicate with your team, clients, and so forth. And so all free resources, I put some stars by some stuff. I'm like, let me go, you know, type and see what we can do too. And we might actually have to have a session just to dive deeper. Um, I'm quite sure there are some experts and so forth out there who can say, oh, let me make sure, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And it'll help people decide if it's time to pay or if they can get good utilization out of the free version as well. Um, and so if there are no more questions, I want to thank everyone for joining us. And definitely if you're watching this later, feel free to drop it in the chat if you have another question. And then we'll tag Claire and make sure that you are able to get your questions answered. And if you have any questions or want to contact Claire, her contact information is in the event itself and on the graphics for the event today made in canva um, <laughs> and be sure to reach out to her via calendly and um, book your coaching session or book your vacation because i'm quite sure as most of us are we are ready to get away yes. and get our life back to a post covid world so thank you so much claire for joining us again tonight and i wish you all a very great evening thank you